talk about some of the principals for the Los Angeles Raiders, their Rookie of the Year candidate in the NFL. Number 32, Marcus Allen. Allen, the Heisman Award winner from Southern California, leads the National Football League. He has 12 touchdowns, nine rushing, three receiving, two last week against the Denver Broncos. Some players are just never rookies. Marcus Allen came into this league playing like a veteran. The important thing that he brings to this Raider team is dimension. His tremendous speed and running ability inside. And if you stop him as a runner, he'll hurt you as a pass receiver. Now let's switch to the San Diego Chargers. Dan Fouts, the veteran quarterback from the University of Oregon. And Air Coriel. Fouts, the leading passer in passing efficiency in the NFL. And he has that tremendously talented core of receivers, including Kellen Winslow, who has led the National Football League in receptions the last two years. Fouts has a special year going. He certainly does. And Don Coriel has constructed this offense around the special abilities of Dan Fouts, especially his ability to read defenses. I don't think there's a player in the league. I personally feel that no player in the league is more important to his team than Dan Fouts is to the San Diego Chargers. And the Charger fans, of course, they uh, have shown their superlatives. They have those decorating the walls of this stadium as they get ready for the kickoff. And Across the way, the head man for the Los Angeles Raiders, Tom Flores. He knows a victory today would give him entire home field advantage in the playoffs with an 8-1 record. A loss would drop him to the fourth best record in the AFC. On the other side of the field, Don Coriel, one of the most intense coaches in professional football and a man who lives and breathes and eats and sleeps offensive football. One of the very bright innovative minds of the passing game certainly a man whose time has arrived with the new emphasis in football on the pass the Chargers if they should beat the Raiders today would have the second best record in the AFC that's presuming that Miami's going to win at Baltimore so there's a lot at stake and if anyone can remember the importance of home field it would be the Chargers who had to play the AFC championship game in frigid Cincinnati last year and did not play well Jim Tunney with a toss of the coin one of the nice things about this game, uh, both of these teams have great speed offensively, and this this field is very hard. It's a an extremely fast track out there. We're going to have some fun. People trying to keep up with each other today. Now the Chargers have, in the last three games under Fouts, total yardage of over 500 yards and wins against San Francisco, Cincinnati, and again last week against Baltimore. And Fouts has been the Man that ignites it all. He's the catalyst and great talent surrounding him. Well, he certainly has gotten great performance out of West Chandler. Seven touchdowns in the last three weeks. Chandler has really arrived as a performer here in, in San Diego. There are the numbers. National Football League. Fouts with the most passing yards. Montana. Ken Anderson who had a big day today for Cincinnati in a victory. 20 in a row for Anderson. A new NFL record. And for the Los Angeles Raiders, perhaps not so impressive the statistics of Jim Plunkett, but we all know about that vertical passing game of the Raiders, and they can hit you in a hurry. And Plunkett has thrown seven touchdowns in the last three weeks, so they've gotten things going uh, offensively. They bring into this game a very strong defense. That's, that's going to be the matchup of the day, perhaps, the Raider defense against the Charger offense. Especially the Raiders, who lead the NFL in sacks. We'll see if they can pressure Fouts. No one has really been able to accomplish that this year. Deep to return, Greg Pruitt and Cleo Montgomery, Benershka to kick it off for San Diego. It's a beautiful 65 degree day. Montgomery at the one. And he's covered at the 23 yard line. Andre Young, number 49, one of the three rookies on this San Diego team. Raiders come on the field. Jim Plunkett, the quarterback. Heisman Award winner himself from Stanford University. He has with him in the backfield Kenny King from Oklahoma. And the man we've been talking so much about and is the talk of the NFL, rookie Marcus Allen, who is in the top ten in both rushing and in receiving. Tight end will be Todd Christensen, number 46. He had eight catches, one for a touchdown against San Diego in the earlier L.A. victory. Cliff Branch and Malcolm Barnwell are the wide receivers, both to the left. Plunkett on a screen to Marcus Allen. A flag is down. So is Allen. Louis Kelcher made the tackle, along with David Lewis. The penalty is holding against Los Angeles. 
rather a silly place to hold. You want to let the offense or the defensive line penetrate, but perhaps someone had broken so clean that they were going to come in on top of Plunkett before he was ready to throw. The Raiders, the most penalized team by far in the National Football League, averaging about 90 yards by penalties a game this year. Holding 79, 10 yards, still first down. Bruce Davis, the left tackle with the hold. Brings the ball back to the 14-yard line. There's the offensive backfield of the Raiders and the receivers. Offensive line, Davis, Marsh, Dalby, Marvin, and Lawrence. First down from the 14. Allen to the 20. 25. Bubble. And the Raiders recover at the 33-yard line. They're going to roll the ball down at the 30. Kelcher made the tackle. And a fine run by Marcus Allen as he picked up some 16 yards. If I can take a quick look at the certainly the rookie of the year in everyone's book. Allen runs right out of the grasp of Lewis right there. Cuts back inside. Williams misses him. Uh, Fox misses him. Finally, Louis Kelcher gets it from the backside and Laird there to finish it up. Number 30. Kelcher banged himself up a little on the play. He's come out. Wilbur Young has gone in in his place. You can see clearly that Allen fumbled when he hit the ground. Ball dead. Plenty of time. It'll be third and four for Plunkett and the Raiders. Plunkett shaking his head threw into good coverage there. They really had covered Todd very comfortably. Todd, of course, with such a big game against the Chargers in that earlier victory when they came back from that large deficit, 24 to nothing in the first half. Defense for the Chargers, Jones, Kelcher, Johnson, and Ferguson, a four-man front. Somewhat a rarity. Linebackers King, Thrift, and Lowe. Jeff Allen, Mike Williams at the corners. Fox and Laird to San Diego by trade. This past year are the safety men. Plunkett has the first down as he's popped by 57, Lyndon King. Down at the 36-yard line, a six-yard scramble to a first down for Plunkett. Jim Plunkett, not the kind of quarterback who enjoys running the football, but will run it when he has to. This particular case, all his receivers were covered. <laughs> He's looking for a place to get to the ground. Takes a pretty shot there from the trip. And he was dazed, Merlin. He's gone off the field staggering like a fighter that just had taken a right cross to the chin. And Mark Wilson, number six, who has thrown the ball only two times all year, is the quarterback. Plunkett trying to clear his head. Wilson from BYU. He knows what to do with it. Give it to Allen. And Allen ducks out of bounds after a gain of about eight yards to the 44. A little bit of irony. It was just a couple of years ago that we watched Jim Plunkett come onto this field in relief of Dan Pastorini, a critical fourth down situation, throw a pass under intense pressure that kept Oakland in the ball game, and of course later on uh, went on to that fantastic year leading Oakland to the Super Bowl. And now it's Wilson subbing for Plunkett, lanky 6-6 quarterback in his third year out of Brigham Young. Second and two, Kenny King. Going to be close to a first down. Appears to be about a half yard short. Gary Johnson. Keith Ferguson made the tackle. Johnson, number 79, named to the Pro Bowl. As the Chargers, many of them were honored in the vote of coaches and players around the league. And Johnson has been in on that ball carry all year long. Here comes Plunkett back into the huddle. Chandler, Winslow, Wilkerson, Fouts, Johnson, Muncie, and Bernerska all make the Pro Bowl for San Diego. Hendricks and Hayes for the Raiders. Allen has the first down at the 47-yard line. Lyndon King, 57, the tackler. Bucket pulling in for the first down. They'll move the sticks. Getting off to a good start in this ball game. Looks like he's got his hair cleared now. Yeah, they overcame that penalty of holding on the very first down that 
back at their 14, but Marcus Allen's long run, 16 yards, starting this drive. Plunkett's 15 interceptions bothering him, and of course the Raiders, he's tied with Joe Ferguson, most interceptions this year. Penalty flag down. Christensen at the Charger 45. We may have a motion call against the Raiders. It's going to take a closer look at quarterback Jim Plunkett. Plunkett, of course, one of those fine athletes who's managed to survive a lot of tough going in the NFL. A, a rather awkward throwing style for a quarterback. Not known as a pretty thrower, but uh, believe me, he has completed more than his share of throws. The other thing he likes, he likes the deep game. He's a big play quarterback and sometimes has trouble when defenses force him to throw under the zones. San Diego running so many zone defenses will force him to do that today. The legal formation and on the line of scrimmage was covered by the flanker. Still first down. You must have seven men on the line of scrimmage, seven or more. Illegal procedure. There's Johnson from Grambling. Big hands, the number one pick in 75. Two times an All-Pro and undoubtedly will make those All-Pro lists again this year. block of Kenny King to the 46 yard line. It'll be second down and 11 and guess who made the stop. Gary Big Hands Johnson going head to head with Kurt Marsh a very strong young rookie neutralizes the block breaks to the outside and is able to get his hands around the waist of Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen still pulling away for a little yardage there but good play by the veteran defensive tackle. Second down 11. Branch, the speed man to the left. Barnwell, he's not exactly slow as to the bottom of your picture. Todd Christensen, the tight end. Crockett stepping away from pressure, could not hit Allen. It'll be third and 11, and Gary Johnson trying to get his big hands on Plunkett. Would love to get a hold of him. Part of the equation that we'll be watching all day long is how much time will these quarterbacks have to throw? What kind of pressure will we be able to get them? And certainly both quarterbacks would like to establish a running game to take some pressure off the passing game. It's important for Tom Flores. He knows a win means he plays in the Coliseum throughout the playoffs. Of course, the Rose Bowl hosts the Super Bowl. Ferguson and Louis Kelcher, Jack Plunkett. That's the equation we talked about. And this is the way to make it difficult for a quarterback or an offensive team. You put the squeeze on him and you take him to the ground. Gary Johnson there along with Kelcher, but it was Ferguson, a young veteran that's really making a name for himself here in San Diego, who was first on the tackle. San Diego with only 16 sacks this year. The Raiders lead the league with 35, but a big one for the Bruise Brothers, as they're called in San Diego, and Raymond Guy to punt. James Brooks at the 14. Good coverage by the Raiders at the 16-yard line. Chester Willis, number 38, the tackler, and we have a timeout. Mazda, who invites you to experience the all-new Mazda 626 by Gillette Atra Razor, the twin blade razor that pivots for a close, comfortable shave. And by Holiday Inn, the only hotel chain that gives you a no-excuses room guarantee. San Diego with possession for the first time at the 21-yard line after a 9-yard return of a 49-yard Raymond Guy punt. And Dan Faust goes to work. Good protection. There's Winslow. Incomplete. Mike Davis on the coverage for the Raiders. Check that San Diego offense. Fouts in his 10th year and brilliantly throwing the football this season as the quarterback. John Capaletti basically is the blocker. Chuck Muncie, the runner and receiver. We'll see a lot of James Brooks in the backfield. 
tremendous core with Joyner, Winslow, and Chandler having a brilliant year. Shields, Wilkerson, Masick, White, and Washington have allowed bouts to be sacked only nine times all year. That's Eric Sievers, backup tight end in motion. Muncie, a huge hole. There was no one left in a black uniform. Muncie finally went down. Bob Nelson saved the touchdown. Chuck Muncie showing tremendous acceleration. A little cross blocking trap on the inside. Able to seed off the blockers. That was 55. Matt Millen getting a crunching block on the, on the outside. I believe that's Ed White on top of him. But Muncie showing quick acceleration. They're going to have to measure it for the first down. Merlin, uh, someone else that showed quick acceleration, if we could see that again, was number 88 in the black and white, Pat Harder, the umpire. Of course, he's right in the thick of that. That's his position. And Harder was a first down, says Tunney. Harder was a great fullback. That's what, there he is, 88. Pat Harder, it's his last game. He's announced his retirement as an official. Watch him get out of the way. <laughs> Let me out of here, he says. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Well, he was a great player and a great official. Hopefully he'll get an assignment in the playoffs. If he does not, this will be his last game. First down, Pouts. Going long, Joyner. No flag. Ted Watts, number 20, in a bumping situation, but both were fighting for their legal rights. You get a chance to see it for yourself. That's Ted Watts, 20, covering tight on Joyner. They're shoulder to shoulder and incidental contact. Joyner, of course, showing a, a little bit of acting ability there. Wasn't able to draw the flag from the official. Appeared to be a good no call. Nine minutes, 31 seconds left in the first quarter. Teams have played since the first year of the old AFL in 1960 when the Chargers were the L.A. Chargers playing in the Coliseum, now the home of the Raiders. It is a small world. The first sack for the Raiders, Lyle Alzado, who leads the team with six, make it seven for the veteran from Yankton, South Dakota. Howie Long has also complimented that pass rush. Reggie Kinlaw, the middle guard. Ted Hendricks, he's on the way to another Pro Bowl with the big linebackers, Millen and Nelson. Rod Martin, they felt he should have gone to bowl. Lester Hayes, he's a Pro Bowler. Ted Watts at the corners. Mike Davis, the hitter. And the veteran, Burgess Owens, at safety. Alcedo doing a good job of beating Billy Shields. Big number 66 on that last, last play. Went all the way around, got bouts from the backside. Triple left formation. And bouts as a man, Chandler. And down at the 48-yard line, first down, Rod Martin made the tackle. One of the things that Dan Fouts will do is throw to receivers who are covered. He has so much confidence in his receivers. He throws this football into a double-covered Chandler who simply breaks away as, as the defenders hit each other. Mike Davis, number 36, knocking himself off on that play. Let's watch Watson, the isolation now. Chandler just cutting inside, and it's, it's Watson Davis who knock each other down on that play. 27 yards for Chandler. This is Brooks. And he loses a couple. Back to Chandler with a 27 yards, Merlin, on that last catch. He already, now this is just the ninth game of the year, West Chandler has 921 yards receiving. He might well have 1,000 yards in this shortened season. That's phenomenal. That's hard to believe. And look at the totals for the three receivers. Winslow with 645, Joyner with 503, a total of over 2,000 yards. That's more yardage than all the rest of the NFL teams on offense except three. Second down, 12. Open. Chandler again. And he is so dangerous with the ball after the catch. Ted Watts won't let him go. 21 yards on that play. When Chandler came here from New Orleans, I talked to Dan Fouts about his special abilities. Fouts said, we hated to see John Jefferson leave, but this young man may be a better receiver in time even than John Jefferson, and the reason is that he has such great talent after he catches the football. Hey, let go of me, huh? <laughs> Watts doesn't want him to go back to the huddle. He's seen enough of him already. I don't blame him. 
First down at the 29. And James Brooks burrows for about three, maybe four. Alzado and Howie Long, the tacklers. Brooks has certainly earned his share of respect in the NFL. Not a big back, but averaging five yards a carry and surprisingly strong. You talk to linebackers like Matt Millen, and they'll tell you he really will deliver a blow on there. Amazingly strong up inside. Well, we talked about Anthony Carter, and every time he touched the ball, 17 yards. Well, Brooks this year, over nine yards every time he handles the ball. Fouts, the quick hitter to Winslow. He's down shy of the 20, short of the first down. Winslow, who leads the AFC in catches, now has his 49th of this year. Chance to watch Eric Sievers, number 85, who is blocking. He's going to get a piece of Rod Martin one way or another, trying to keep Martin out of the pattern. And Kellen Winslow, let's see how he got open for that pass. A little fake inside and just stops. And again, you see Mike Davis giving him room because of the tremendous speed of the big tight end. You've got to play him like a wide receiver. Veteran Charlie Joyner in motion. There he is. First and goal at the nine-yard line. Such accuracy with the football. Again, Fouts throwing to a receiver that's double covered. Look at that. Two, two Raiders closing in from the outside. But Fouts throwing with tremendous confidence and tremendous accuracy and also a great deal of velocity on that pass. And great protection. 63, Doug Wilkerson. Chuck Muncie is trapped and dropped for a loss. Ted Hendricks, those long arms of Hendricks playing in his 199th consecutive game and still a brilliant linebacker. We got a quick look at Doug Wilkerson, number 63. Uh, Wilkerson, one of what they would call five tackles around the league. Defensive linemen who have to play against this offensive line here in San Diego are, are just frustrated by the physical size and strength of, of that front line. Second and goal from the 10. Make it the 11. Surprising call. Muncie straight ahead. They were hoping to catch the Raider defense. Thinking pass and maybe in a blitz. Hendricks once again makes the tackle along with Kinlaw. With that running play, we have a chance to watch Wilkinson showing part of his skill as he just buried McClanahan. Oh, that's 55. Millen diving in there. He just laid on him. Covered him up. Muncie breaking over the outside, but not a big gain. Bounce will go to the air on this third and nine. A pass situation, and Alzado ready to tee off. Third and goal. Oh, almost intercepted and should have been by Purchase Owens, and then Wes Chandler had a chance at the carom. One of the things you tell defensive backs, when that ball is in the air, if you can't get it, get it down on the ground. Don't tip it around where the receivers have a chance. Fouts not able to go to his initial receiver, has time, throws a, a pass that could conceivably have been intercepted by two men, Owens and Davis, who was behind him. But as you said, Dick, Chandler, with his great concentration on the football, almost able to get there and intercept it. 27-yard try by Benershka. It's good. Wrong Minerska. 15 for 20 this year. Let's go back and look at that last play. Ted Watts 20 covering Chandler on that play. Chandler breaking open. I think he was perhaps the intended receiver. Ball bounced away. Chandler comes back to try and pick it up. Unable to do so drive from their 22 to the Los Angeles 9, settled for the field goal by Benerska, who will now kick it off to Montgomery and Pruitt. 4.07 left in the first quarter. Montgomery at the goal line. Return by Cleo Montgomery, the brother of the Eagles, brilliant running back Wilbert Montgomery. 36 yards on the return, a timeout. The Raiders have the football. They need three to tie. 
Act in Merlin Olson, San Diego Stadium. The temperature 65 degrees at kickoff. A perfect football afternoon. These two long standing rivals, Chargers, they had 24 0 in their first game and lost 28 24. Here comes Plunkett to Barnwell and a first down at the Raider 49 yard line. The scores today are the earlier games and of course now we can start to fit the playoff puzzle together. New England is in. They've beaten the Buffalo Bills 30 to 19. Chuck Knox's team is out. Kansas City with a surprise of the day beating the Jets handily. The Giants surprise the Eagles 26 24. We'll have to see whether or not they'll be in the playoffs. Washington the best record in the. NFL at the moment 28 nothing over St. Louis the Redskins eight and one the Raiders trying to do the same wide open Branch, and he's out of bounds at the Charger 32 yard line Los Angeles Raiders love the deep patterns and no one runs them better for them and Cliff Branch, number 21. And how many times have we seen him come up with the deep play, with a deep shot? Plunkett had plenty of time to wait for Branch to find the opening in the zone defense. Gives him the football on that reception. Let's look at the time Plunkett has here. Kenny King stepping up to a little fake there in a the block. He's got time to almost eat his lunch back there before Ferguson finally hits him from behind. Raiders trailing 3-0. Marcus Allen. Big hole. He's to the 15-yard line and a first down. Oh, a major league move by young kid from San Diego Lincoln High School. Then the USA and now a Raiders. I would not like to be down there trying to tackle Marcus Allen. Just beautiful balance as he goes. Look at that little stutter step right there. Able to elude a, a second tackler. Ran right through the first tackler. A blend of great power and great physical balance. Has his body in control all the time. Started it with power and finished with a finesse and a first down at the 15. Christensen was wide open in the end zone. The rest of the scores, and I believe now the AFC picture is, well, not quite until we get this final. 30 to 21, it appears the Steelers are going to beat the Browns. The Browns are in. Cincinnati, they're right in the top of the AFC, 35 27 over Houston. Chicago and Tampa Bay are now in overtime. Tampa Bay, if it wins, is in. Miami, 34, Baltimore, seven, fourth quarter. And San Francisco, still with a hope to get in the playoffs, leading the Rams early. Barnwell to the four yard line and that's going to be a first down for the Raiders 11 yards on the pickup in the earlier game in Los Angeles the Raiders were able to take advantage of the zones by throwing underneath the zone defenses of San Diego they do it again look at how much room Barnwell has in front of those defenders Jeff Allen laying off too far you just can't give the receivers that much room and hope to do anything but come up and make the tackle first and goal Los Angeles both branch and Barnwell are wide left they run the other way with Marcus Allen no sir says Rover Young number 99 also in on the play, 59, Cliff Thrift, the middle backer. Big Leroy Jones, number 68, at the bottom of that stack as well. Greg Pruitt, number 34, on the sideline talking to his coach. I would imagine that he's a messenger occasionally in this kind of situation if they want an extra back. Todd Christensen has had an outstanding year, leads the Raiders, 36 catches to tight end. They like to go to him down on the goal line. Kenny King, only a yard. Gary Johnson, 79, backed up by Cliff Trip, 59, and Louis Kelcher was there as well. Challenging that Charger defense right up the middle. Big Louis Kelcher moving inside, doing a good job of getting off the block. 65, Mickey Marvin there, and just throwing his close to 300 or slightly over 300 pounds into the path of the ball carrier. Trailing 3-0, the Raiders third and goal. Allen. Bruce Laird saved the touchdown, number 30. When Allen reversed his field, there was no one on that side except Laird, who 
who came up quickly and cut off the outside, forced Allen inside, and then the tackle. It didn't work, but this is a big league play. Allen knows there's no percentage to the right. He goes back, and except for the alert play of number 30, Laird, who forced him back inside, might have been able to outrun the coverage and go all the way into the end zone. So the Raiders apparently will go for a field goal, but they have time to think about it because that's the end of the first quarter. With Merlin Olson, Dick Enberg, welcome back to San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. The ball is at the five-yard line. Don Coriel's Chargers leading 3-0. And Chris Barr will attempt a short field goal, 23 yards to tie it on fourth and goal. We have a new game on the first play of the second quarter. Barr nails the field goal. Barr three, Benerska three, Matuzak. Well, you'll be accounted for later. <laughs> Signaling like an official. We'll be back. Tied at three. Baseball. Chris Barr just kicking a 22-yard field goal to tie the game at three. Second quarter, just three seconds old. Brooks is deep. Takes a lateral bounce out of bounds away from Hank Bauer. And Bauer, Barr will have to kick again as Bauer let it go out of bounds. Get all those B's together. And of course, one of the problems that Barr has had as a kicker is that he does not have as powerful a kicking leg as some of the other kickers in the league and does not tend to drive that ball well on the kickoffs. A disadvantage for the Oakland Raiders. Let's look at the statistics, Merlin. The first quarter of action between the Raiders and the Chargers. Raiders able to get off 18 plays to the Chargers 14. Rushing yardage certainly favoring the Los Angeles Raiders. Passing yardage in favor of the Chargers. Of course, Important thing, uh, it's like starting over again here in the second quarter. 3 3. Yeah, the Raiders have had the ball two possessions, and the Chargers are about to get it for the second time themselves. Both teams able to move the ball offensively, and both teams able to control the ball offensively. One of these defenses is going to have to start picking up the pace, putting some squeeze on. From the 30 yard line, you're right there on the Raider line to go down under the kickoff. Short. Brooks at the 14. 40. And he's out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Chris Barr himself in on the tackle. On this play, the outside coverage man, number 82, Calvin Muhammad, is pulled to the inside as Brooks makes a brilliant fake up inside. Now watch Brooks fake inside and go outside. Number 82, Muhammad, is caught inside, allows Brooks to make about seven extra yards. If you are just joining us and you see that score, you're probably wondering, what a defensive struggle. Hardly that. Both teams have moved the ball, but have had to settle for short field goals. And San Diego has it after a fine kickoff return at its 47. Wes Chandler double covered and fouled through the ball to the outside away from the black jerseys. In the AFC with the finals now in, this is how it looks at the moment. The Raiders are 7-1, and one, Cincinnati and Miami 7-2. and two. San Diego could be 7-2 and two if they beat the Raiders. Pittsburgh 6 and 3, the Jets 6 and 3. As we update all of this, New England is in 5 and 4 and Cleveland is in 4 and 5. Those are the 18. Muncie barreling to the 44. It'll be third and 2. Reuben Vaughn and Johnny Robinson made the tackle. Chuck Muncie, one of the hardest running backs in the NFL, just literally blows over number 44, Burgess Owens. Kellen Winslow, not only a great receiver, he'll throw a few blocks in there. Gets in the way of Mike Davis and pushes him aside to keep him from being in on the tackle. Third down, about a yard and a half. Well, no short yardage attempt. And Joyner 
can't come up with a catch. Lester Hayes on single coverage. Now there are the Chargers. Third and a long one. Most teams have tried to get the yardage. Fouts was looking for something like 20 rather than two. Didn't get it. Fouts able to get it into the hands of Charlie Joyner. Joyner rarely drops that kind of opportunity. Did on that occasion and we'll see the first punt of the ball game. That yeah, was a catchable ball. Maury Buford, the rookie from Texas Tech, the punter for San Diego, averaging a little over 40 yards a kick this year. Greg Pruitt, the veteran, stands at the Raider 10. Aiming for out of bounds. And it goes in the end zone. First down, Raiders on the touchback. 44-yard punt, they're only a 24-yard net. We have 13-41 remaining in the first half. Bowl tournament, and there's one spot left today in the NFC. All the guys at NFL 82 will update you on that playoff picture that begins next Saturday and Sunday. Kenny King games five. Cliff Thrift, the tackler. It's tied at three here. Benerska, 27-yard field goal for San Diego. And Chris Barr counters with a 22-yard effort for the Raiders. Boy, Coriel looks in superb condition, doesn't he? Does a lot of running and uh, worries enough to keep, keep his weight down, I'm sure. 58 years of age. Excellent condition. Second and five. Almost intercepted by Mike Williams. It was Woody Lowe that deflected the ball. Todd Christensen appeared to be the target Bucket was searching for. Woody Lowe going high in the air, the ball away, and just off the fingertips of Mike Williams, who, who's sick about missing an opportunity for an interception. Blunkett relieved that that ball end up, ended up on the ground. You saw you saw, saw the uh, Raiders using the talents of Marcus Allen there, sweeping him wide out of the backfield and then breaking him up the field. And, of course, the defense very conscious of the catching ability of him on that play. Third and five. and a first down, and it appeared the Chargers had him. Rare to find a, a runner who can do that kind of stopping and stepping in the backfield and then get instant acceleration enough to break clear and pull down the first yard, first down yardage. Just a, a remarkable athlete, Dick. It underlines again your point, Merlin. He has that terrific combination. Power, you see, and finesse. And he rarely takes a straight shot. He's able to avoid the heavy shots. Open Barnwell. And Woody Lowe gets him down at the 48-yard line. Another first down. Well, that was a nice uh, fake toss to Allen. And then the quick shot up the middle to Barnwell. A well-designed play to, to take advantage of the defense. Watch the fake here. Fakes the toss out to Allen. You have to respect that. Then comes back very quickly to a wide open Barnwell down the middle. Had fooled the linebackers. They had started in pursuit of Marcus Allen, knowing how dangerous he is on the sweep. 17 yards for Barnwell. His 21st catch of the year. Christensen close to another first down inside the San Diego 42. Lyndon King of Colorado State, the tackler. Todd Christensen, one of the players that Dallas let get away and talking to Bob Ward, who's their strength and conditioning coach, he said Todd Christensen was the best athlete we had in our entire camp. Scored higher than anyone else in our and he really hated to see Todd get away. Well, the Raiders have certainly made use of his abilities this year. Marcus Allen has 
gets the first down at the 39-yard line. And the Raiders in this three-all tie continue to move well. Todd Christensen, not only a receiver, he's not afraid to stick his head in there. Lyndon King, number 57, he's pushed out of the way very handily by the tight end, number 46, Todd Christensen. Well, the Cowboys tried him at fullback. He had such great talent, size, and speed. They figured he'd be a good runner. Didn't quite find his home there. Wandered around, and finally the Raiders set out, puts it back where you belong. He was a receiver at BYU. Cliff Branch. And he's out of bounds at the 33. That'll be about four yards short of a first down. Lyndon King made the play for San Diego, and it appeared to be uh, headed for a bigger game for Branch. Some good blocking on the far side. Branch did a good job of breaking around, and one of the challenges for any head coach is, for any coaching staff, is to make the best possible use of the talents and the tools that they have to work with. Branch has extremely fine speed, and they're using him, in that case, as a runner to try and catch the defense off guard, break the wall. Tim Fox, the veteran acquired from New England. Allen. He scores to the two-yard line. And upset that he didn't get a touchdown. Tim Fox, who has double duty trying to stop the run as well as the pass. And Allen almost went the distance. Tim Fox, number 48, and is trying to run it down from behind, but boy, he's got his work cut out for him. Dives and just gets enough of a leg to pull Allen down. That play was really set up by the little dip at the line of scrimmage. Allen coming in, dipped off where he was touching people, then broke back outside, went all the way down on the play. It's that little, that little extra move that makes him the great back that he is. The Raiders are going to call time. Marcus Allen, a 30-yard run. Allen already in this first half has 83 yards. Timeout, game tied at three. It's the start of that 30-yard run by Allen. Now watch Marcus Allen take this little dip in right there. It looks like he's going into the line. That pulls the defenders in, and then he just glides to the outside. You saw how they were able to, that's setting up the blocks. And that's just an absolutely beautiful move by Marcus Allen. First and goal for the Raiders at the two. A fake to Allen, wide open, touchdown, Frank Hawkins. So Plunkett let the Chargers think it was Allen to get the ball. And then Hawkins, the other setback, wide open. Great faking by Plunkett. And of course, they respect the, the playing ability of number 32. They fit. And number 27, Frank Hawkins, all by himself. Watch the bite by the linebacker on this side. That's 57 King. He was so eager to get his hands on, on Marcus Allen. I don't think that's his responsibility, the outside. Someone else not there in coverage as well. Barr trying to add the extra point. And the Los Angeles Raiders looking for their eighth win against a single loss. Jump into the lead. Plunkett using Allen as the decoy. Frank Hawkins for the touchdown. It's 10 to 3. 909 left in this first half. It's now 10 to 3 in favor of the Raiders. Both teams headed for the playoffs. I'm excited about the Super Bowl uh, championship. I am too, Dick. And I, I think the uh, the quality of the play is just getting to a point where the games are going to be played at, at top speed and with great emotion. And I, I think we're going to have some fun in the next four weeks. And, of course, stay with us at halftime. We'll have the teams that are in the playoffs and perhaps some of the matchups in the first week of the season. Brooks takes the touchback and San Diego trailing by a touchdown begins at the 20 yard line. These are the finals. The Patriots are in the playoffs. Buffalo is out. Kansas City. The Jets are in Kansas City not but boy did they humble the Jets today. Philadelphia had it in their grasp but the Giants may now get the playoff spot. Washington eight and one. They have the best record in the NFC. Pittsburgh beats Cleveland but Cleveland is in the playoffs as are the Steelers. Houston gave Cincinnati a scare. The Bengals one of the best records. And time Tampa Bay eliminated Chicago. Tampa Bay is in. Muncie out of bounds at the 29 a gain of nine. 
Burgess Owens made the tackle. Miami has defeated Baltimore 34 to 7. That final just in. So the Dolphins, they're rooting for San Diego in this game. We'll tell you why. Rams have tied San Francisco first quarter. Other action late in the NFL. Detroit. I think they still have a hope there. 14-7 against Green Bay. The Packers are in. And in a game, both, both those teams are out of it. And it's 3-2. New Orleans still has an outside chance. And they're leading Atlanta 7-3 second quarter. Muncie gets the first down. The reason why Miami is rooting for San Diego today, a Charger win would give Miami full home field advantage in the playoffs. If the Raiders win, then it's the Raiders that would be assured that home field advantage. 10-3 to three the score. The Raiders lead as they try to repeat their win in the Coliseum 28-24 against San Diego. And as late into the year as we're playing, that home field advantage would be critical in some parts of the country. But... Muncie, a step too long on the throw as Crouch tried to set it up with a pump fake down the middle and then rainbow the pass on the deep swing to Muncie. San Diego Chargers rather unique in the way they approach pass protection. Fouts throws the ball quickly, normally gets it off from relatively close to the line. Using the huge bulk, the size of his offensive line to protect him, and he has an agreement with them. He'll get the ball away quickly. He takes very few sacks, only 10 on the season so far, and even though he's been pressured today, the Raiders have not been able to get to him yet. Fouts, 5 for 11. right into the grasp of Howie Long, number 75. Second-year man from Villanova. Now Zato very high on Long. Kellen Winslow, who led the NFL in catches the last two years, eight and 88 receptions, won't lead it this year, but still leads the AFC with 49, counting one today. What a target. He's only 24, 6'5 and a half, 251. Oh, what a hit on Fouts. Ted Hendricks, 83, has the Raiders' second sack in their 37th of the year, and Fouts almost dislodged from the football. I must have been in the Raider huddle when I said uh, they hadn't got to him yet. Well, they come with the all-out blitz. Not enough people to get on his back. And I'll, I'll take a correction on that. That's the second sack of the day for the Raiders. But uh, the first one didn't hurt nearly as much as that one. They really stacked him up. The stork, the mad stork. Kick him. 36 years old. One game away from 200 in a row for Hendricks. Ten men coming on Buford. The lines one deep to Pruitt at the 30. 40. And out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Good return by the veteran from Oklahoma, Greg Pruitt. 46-yard kick, 18 yards on the return. Raiders have the ball and the lead. From San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium, the Raiders of Los Angeles leading their rivals to the south. San Diego 10 to 3. Tom Flores club has the football at the Raider 47. Henry Lawrence has had a fine year. Bright tackle from Florida A&M. He's cleared some holes for Allen. Plunk it to Christensen. Smothered at the San Diego 48, a gain of about five. We pause briefly for station identification from San Diego, California. This is the NBC Television Network. WRC TV, Channel 4, Washington, D.C. 7 for 11 and 77 yards and has led his team into the lead 10 to 3. To Kendrick with Merlin Olsen at San Diego Stadium on a sunny but cool 65 degree day. The Raiders playing for the top record in the American Football Conference. They've lost only one. Marcus Allen. Only a yard game that time. Leroy 
Jones, six eight, got his long arms on the rookie. To try to get outside. Henry Lawrence, number 70, is the man trying to block Leroy Jones, trying to take him outside here. Marcus Allen with the option to go inside or outside, elects to go outside, and big Leroy Jones gets out there and uses his six foot eight inch frame and those long arms to whip the running back out of bounds. Third and a short five. Five and a half minutes remaining in the half. Charger fans try to help the defense. Big hands Johnson invades foreign territory. Pat Harder, the umpire there, telling Johnson, you were offside. Well, you want to get some pump going and some excitement, but you don't want that much. And it would appear that one of the... Ooh, that hurts even up here. But I, it looks like one of the Raiders, you know, they, they're going to say they didn't move. Correction on the call. The call was encroachment defense. Okay. An early signal was made to indicate the penalty was against Oakland. But uh, you saw Gene Tunney correcting that mistake on the field. And the replay showed that the Raider offensive line had not moved. That Johnson was gambling on the snap count. Did you ever do that? Just guess that this going to go on the first call? Or? Well, you'd think that when you're playing defensive tackle and you're sitting right there on the football that you'd be able to move with the ball. But sometimes you just get so excited and so pumped that you think you see something move. Let's go down and look at that. Get a closer look at it. Now, the offsides will come from the right side of your picture there. Nobody moves a muscle <laughs> but Big Heads Johnson. And then he moved Jim Plunkett's jaw about six inches, I think, too. I think I said Gene Tunney. That's Jim Tunney, Finery's uh, official and one of, the, one of the best referees in the business. Well, and he'd be complimented to be called. Well, I think you would. Yeah, I think you would. One of the greatest athletes in American history. From the 42, a first down. Raiders lead 10 to 3. Wide open is Allen, but the pass was overthrown. Coverage by Jeff Allen, not related, from Cal Davis. Pair of Allens there. Bucket really has been given a great deal of time by his offensive line and not able to capitalize on that one. Bucket really does not throw the long pass as effectively as he did early in his career, but still has surprising power in, in delivering that football. And there again, the example, Merlin, of the vertical game, even though the pass incomplete, you stretch out that defense, make them think long, that can open it up underneath. Greg Pruitt, Louis Kelter, they love Louis. Pruitt utilized mostly as a return man and Occasionally as a receiver, used as a runner there, but didn't fool Big Louie. Got a smile on his face after that one. Kelcher listed at 282. That might be about 40 pounds shy. <laughs> he has lost some weight since we saw him last, though, Rick, in San Francisco. Third and a short nine. with his second sack. <laughs> Leroy Jones is there as well. Defensive coordinator Tom Bass says that's what we want. That's the way to get him. Get in there and sack Plunkett. Watch Plunkett here. Sees the blitz coming, but just can't avoid it. Got pressure to the right of him, pressure to the left of him. Nowhere to hide. Sacked by the two defensive ends, Ferguson and Jones. All the way back to the Raider 45, so Raymond Guy to kick. James Brooks deep at the San Diego 10. Beautiful kick. And it goes out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Guy. 
side of the guy kicking a bowl. He's been bothered by a bad back, but hit that one and hung it beautifully. Guy has had his problems this year, Dick, but he's that's that's his 13th punt. 12 of them have gone out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. And, and, that, and that one 48 yards inside the 10-yard line. An almost block. Good pressure by the Chargers. Coming from the outside, Pete Hollihan right there, number 88, diving across. Almost touched that football. But what a great weapon guy has been over the years. A lot of people not understanding the pain he's played in during this season. out to the 13 yard line good pick up on first down Howie Long the tackler Dan Fouts really an interesting man and uh, a background that has been football is his father not many uh, broadcasters produce uh, sons that are good athletes uh, in this manner Bob Fouts was the 49er announcer for many years Dan Fouts grew up around the 49 Nothing there at the 14-yard line except Reuben Vaughn, 99, and Rod Martin, 53. Routes then uh, idolized uh, John Brody. He was the ball boy at Keysar Stadium when the 49ers played there. Went on to Oregon. Oregon didn't have really a pass-oriented team, and a lot of folks overlooked uh, Fouts as a pro quarterback. He wasn't picked until the third round by the Chargers. And now he's about to break John Hadle's all-time Charger passing record. That should happen today. Wide open, Winslow. And he carries Mike Davis five yards out to the 26. Part of Fouts' success, certainly his amazing ability to read and throw the football, but part of his success, too, in the extraordinary offensive tools that have been assembled here. One of them, number 80, Kellen Winslow. Out there in the open, Mike Davis trying to drag, drag the big tight end down. That's no easy task. First down, Muncie. To the about the 30 call it a three yard game Hendricks spearheaded the Raider defensive charge and we're down to 215 left in this first half Dick the difference in this first half the ability of the Raiders to run the football the Chargers have not been able to develop a consistent running game allows the Raiders to tee off more aggressively on the pass put more pressure on Fouts whereas the San Diego defense has had to stay with the uh, the running and the passing game both. Two minute warning. Diego where the Raiders lead the Chargers 10 to 3. San Diego owns the football at its 30 yard line. It'll be second down and seven with two minutes left in this first half. The Chargers have won five in a row since losing in Los Angeles 28 24 their other defeat at Kansas City 19 to 12. The Raiders winning seven losing one the only loss to Cincinnati 31 17 two wide receivers to the left Lester Hayes runs all the way over to cover one of them West Chandler first down Raider 49 Ted Watts made the tackle what great communication between a quarterback and the wide receiver that ball is in the air already the ball thrown to the inside and low enough West Chandler gets his eyes on it great concentration goes down and scoops it out bounce back quickly just sets up and fires Boy, that's so tough to cover just almost impossible on first down bounce going for the bundle Chandler and watch the interference. It could be. Yeah. Oh, they're calling it against the Raiders. Oh, ho. Oh, oh. ho. It certainly looked as if Watts had a case that it was Chandler who pushed off. Well, we certainly saw Chandler push off, but it's possible that he got pushed just before that. Before we make a judgment on that we ought to give the officials a chance and, and perhaps look at the replay Watts is furious just absolutely furious
and look at it, give you a chance to see it at home. Chandler running wide open, and Fouts just lost the ball up. Watch running with him with good speed. Now let's see where the contact is. It's a push from the right hand. Watch oh didn't boy. touch it. Oh boy. Well, that's a gift of 43 yards for San Diego. Muncie to the two. 43-yard penalty as West Chandler used the push, and he was rewarded for it. Watch the right hand. Chandler's right hand in the middle of the back just shoves Watts away. The official, who was on the back side, unable to tell who caused the contact. It's a blatant miss, though. Well, I'll tell you, it sure is. Clock running down. San Diego with a chance to tie the game. Looking for Muncie, he's covered. Severs, is that a touchdown or not? Evans, no, incomplete, and now Fouts is angry. It appeared that Severs had the ball momentarily in the end zone, and Fouts said all he's got to do is control it, and it's a touchdown. And that's true. The officials didn't seem to believe it. Give you a chance to see it. Fouts back. Just rifles this ball into the inside. Look, he's probably looked at five receivers by then. Into the hands of Severs. He did have it momentarily knocked away. We're seeing that in slow motion. But I would believe that he had possession and it should have been a touchdown. Third and goal. 30 seconds left. And Muncie's not going to make it. It's fourth and goal. As the Raiders defense once again tough down by the goal line. Interesting call for Don Coriel. He'll take a timeout and talk it over here on the sideline. But will they go for it or will they kick the field goal? Well, that's the risk with a team, Merlin, that scores so easily. They scored 44 last week, then 50 the week before, 41 the week before that. Three points is like something they throw away. They, they're thinking seven all the time. There, the rushing defense, Raiders best in the NFL as the Chargers are down by the goal line. National Football League and his usual quality work from my partner Merlin Olson. Bernerska tees it up for a 20-yard field goal try if Ed Luther is the holder, the backup quarterback. He missed what was no more than an extra point. That was teed up at the two-yard line, or the line of scrimmage was the two. And just from the look of Ed Luther, I think perhaps it was a bad hold. He had his head down. Let's see if he gets it down properly. Has got his... Looked like he may have pinched that ball, keeping it from coming out. Had his hand on the ball. Now, the, the man who holds it has got to let the foot swing free under it. Looked like he had a pressure on that ball, caused it to hook. And the reaction? Ralph Bernerska is not going to blame his holder, though. Got too much quality for that. Well, in essence, Merlin, it is poetic justice because the 43-yard penalty appeared to be a gift and got them down in that close field goal range anyway. And then the miss to the left. Can't tell that to Coriel. No, he's a no, hard San Diego fans. Can't tell that to Bernerska. And, of course, you can't tell it to Fouts, who believed that Severs had the ball in the end zone and that they should have had a, a touchdown. So it remains a Raider lead of 10 to 3. And that in itself is an upset that we've seen just 13 points in this first half. Ball comes out to the 20-yard line on the missed field goal. And Don Coriel thinking about his halftime verbalization on the ground a king <laughs> Cliff Branch just stood out there if he'd have thrown a block that might have been a pretty good game Cliff said he didn't figure that you'd get out there so quickly that's the end of the half he was eating his lunch 
Angeles Raiders after Bernerska kicked a short field goal to take a 3-0 lead for San Diego. Barr, a 22-yard field goal, and then a plunk at the Hawkins' two-yard touchdown pass made it 10-3. The star, as it has been most of this year for the Raiders, the rookie Marcus Allen. And the other development this first very strong performance by the Raider defense to limit San Diego's output. So the end of the first half in San Diego, 10-3 Raiders. <laughs> 